It's the latest mega project that if realized could transform the Middle East. That's at least the goal of the U.S., which, alongside India, proposed a new economic corridor on the sidelines of last week's G20 summit in New Delhi. The India-Middle East-Europe Economic Corridor, or IMAC, will connect India with Europe via the Middle East through a series of ports and broad networks. U.S. President Joe Biden has called IMEC a game-changing investment for the U.S. However, with no clarity on when the project will start, many questions have been left unanswered. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan was one of those skeptics and said there cannot be a Middle East corridor without Turkey. He has instead proposed the Iraq Development Road project to connect Europe and the Gulf. IMEC in its current form bypasses Turkey while linking Israel to several Arab nations. IMEC is also being touted as a rival to China's Belt and Road Initiative, a trillion-dollar infrastructure project to recreate the ancient Silk Road. That project, launched 10 years ago, has seen a slowdown over allegations of debt traps and weak demand. And to further discuss the India-Middle East-Europe corridor, joining me now from New Delhi is Anil Trigunayat. He is a former Indian ambassador who served across the Middle East and Mediterranean. And from New York, Taha Meliarvas. He is a professor at Boazichi University. A warm welcome to you both and thanks for joining me on Straight Talk. So Anil, what do you think of this initiative proposed by India, the US, the European Union and Saudi Arabia at the G20 summit earlier this month? I mean, is this really a game-changing project as claimed by the US president? Well, I think that this is a project which is viable uh, and a project that can provide such an alternative routes uh, for the trading. India has been working on several projects in the past. You know about the International North-South Transport Corridor, Chabahar Port. And of course, in the meantime, this new project which has come up, uh, which is an extremely important from our perspective, for the simple reason that the Middle East is extremely, especially the Gulf countries, are extremely important for India's energy security, expat security, and therefore direct connectivity already exists through the sea. Mm -hmm. And they are our nearest partners. And they have become our real strategic partners, especially Saudi Arabia and the UAE. They are also our third and fourth largest trading partners. And therefore, it is extremely important that we have a seamless connectivity with them. And India has also joined, as you know, the I2U2, which is uh, India, Israel, UAE, and uh, USA in that grouping. And there is another grouping which has emerged recently, that is IUSU, India, UAE, and uh, Saudi Arabia, and USA. Now, all these uh, give rise to the greater connectivity, greater trade, uh, greater uh, participation in the global value of supply chains. Yes. And therefore, I think that this is doable. It is an important uh, thing among the strategic partners. And we are looking forward to uh, this going forward. Of course, a lot of details are yet to be worked out. Uh, financing has to be settled. Uh, but as far as India and Middle East are concerned, there is directly quite a bit of uh, connectivity available uh, by sea at the ports. Yes. And so therefore, we have to just work on the inland connectivity with the Middle East. So, um, Taha, this project will require billions of uh, dollars of investment and infrastructure work for roads and uh, railways to connect the involved countries. Um, and it said that it is a feasible and viable project. Would you agree? And is it doable under the current global economic situation? I don't think anyone really um, is taking this very seriously at this point. Uh, in that, the majority of this of this uh, of this path really has or is just water as it is. So this India already ships uh, to uh, to and from the Middle East. This is not a very uh, it's not a huge deal. And more importantly, uh, it's a more uh, what they sign is a memorandum of, understa memorandum of understanding. Um, at the very earliest, we're talking about many many years to come. Uh, and this is more about China, frankly, than it is about India. It's about the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, and the West really um, threatening China and saying, listen, we don't need you. We don't need your uh, corridor. We, we have this alternative. But uh, I, I don't think I don't foresee this happening uh, anywhere in the near future. So, Ani, what do you think? What is the driving force behind this project? I mean, could India strengthening ties with the United States be a reason for the birth of this initiative? And as uh, Taha just briefly mentioned, is this corridor aimed at checking China's growing influence? Well, I think that uh, saying that it is going to block Chinese or be a counter to the Chinese BRI is probably premature. 
for the simple reason that the countries that are involved, especially uh, UAE, Saudi Arabia, many of the Middle Eastern countries, including Israel, have also been part of the BRI. So mm-hmm. therefore, I don't see that you are looking at a, 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 a something that is countering one or the other. But from India's perspective, where it's a, that BRI impinges on India's sovereignty, it definitely is an excellent option. Now, as far as the billions of dollars is concerned, I think that the countries are able to manage it. Uh, Saudi Prince has already committed about $20 billion to it. India is the fifth largest economy, can also uh, pitch in. Indian companies will be have the expertise in building the railway lines. VCC is already talking to India. And so, therefore, it is not that we are looking at alternative in the sense that they are counter one another, but they could be complementary. And it will depend on which is more efficient eventually, because, see, it is the business of the trade that will be using it. Mm-hmm. And so that will be something plus more reliability of the uh, of the route that will be of greater uh, predictability. Uh, that will basically count in this regard. So Taha, has this project got anything uh, to do with the U.S. efforts for a broader diplomatic deal in the Middle East that uh, would have Saudi Arabia, for example, recognize Israel? Sure, this is one of these uh, uh, potential carrots for Saudi Arabia. Um, but the reality is it's really not, it's just not a lot there. Uh, yes, it, it's an uh, alternative. Yes, it's another uh, pathway to Europe, uh, to the West, etc. But like I said, the vast majority of it is already complete because it's ocean. It's like setting up a, uh, a roadway between the United Kingdom and Chicago. The vast majority is ocean as it is. So um, it's, it's great for PR, a couple of pictures. But I think in 10 years time, we're not going to be talking about a a, uh, a railway across the Arabian uh, Peninsula to Jordan and Israel. I just don't think it's going to happen. But it, it, there's a Cold War being fought currently, and this is just one of the measures in, uh, I mean, in fighting that Cold War. So, Anil, you seem confident about financing uh, of this project, but uh, what could you talk to us about the uh, Saudi position um, and? Are all Gulf countries fully on board, on board uh, with this ambitious initiative? Well, at the moment, as you know, it is Saudi Arabia and the UAE which have signed up to it. It is, of course, uh, it will go through Jordan and then to Haifa port. Now, let me tell you this one thing is that from India's Mudra port to Haifa port, which is currently owned by India. In fact, it was bought over from the Israelis recently. And so from Haifa only, it will go forward from there. So as far as India is concerned, that is the position we are looking at. It. India has been a maritime power all along. And mm-hmm. therefore, for us, it is not a problem. And as far as Saudi Arabia and UAE is concerned, of course, they have been talking, GCC countries have been talking for this railway project for a very long time. And uh, not much has come out recently. We had this Qatar blockade and all those things have held up in many of these. But I think they seem to be serious now. I was in Saudi Arabia only last week. And we have had uh, seen and discussions. Now, of course... And like any other project in the world, there this is a project which needs to be worked upon. It is an idea. It is a concept. And how that concept will connect the dots is something that needs to be seen. But uh, I think that it is doable. Doable because you need those kind of routes. Several routes are needed. It is not necessary that we become dependent only on one or the other project. So even if there is a certain kind of a competition, I don't think that it is possible to do away with one or the other. So if it happens, it will be for the larger good. So, uh, Taha, Turkish President uh, Erdogan has pushed back against the uh, proposed route, saying that there can be no corridor uh, without Turkey. What's the reason behind uh, Turkey's exclusion uh, from such a big project? I think what's really going on is um, people are trying to come up with alternative routes um, all over the world uh, so as to hold it over uh, those countries that are in Uh, included in some routes and not. So, for example, this route is a slight to Pakistan. It's a slight to uh, other countries that would have been more feasible or or would have uh, uh, been used because of their closeness to China. Uh, Turkey is uh, geographically, as as President Erdogan has said, um, uh, destined to be a route to the West. They're, they're really, it's much more difficult to set up this route that we're talking about across the Arabian Peninsula uh, around Around swaths, along swaths of hundreds of kilometers of completely desolate areas, um, it, it's uh, it's just a a uh, an idea, as uh, as uh, Mr. Andrew had said a minute ago, 
Um, and will it come to fruition? Will it be completed? I, I don't think so. Yes. India itself, while growing quickly, um, is under financial strain as it is. So, so we'll see what happens here. So, Taha, on the other hand, maybe you know, Turkey is uh, close to finalizing negotiations with Iraq, uh, Qatar and the United Arab Emirates on the Iraq Development Road Initiative. How do you think this right. will come out? And could these projects complement each other or are they clearly rivals? I mean, what we've seen from the Russia-Ukraine uh, war here is that you need alternatives uh, at all times. You don't need to. You don't want to be dependent on one uh, route necessarily. Uh, this, the, the 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 Iraqi route that we're talking about, is really uh, um, one which starts from uh, the energy center of the Middle East uh, through Turkey to the west, which is uh, an alternative and is very very important. Um, uh, and I think we, with all these pipelines currently traveling through Turkey, Turkey has become an energy hub, and it's very difficult to dismiss it uh, as anything but uh, growing, uh, but but it's growing influence uh, in the energy space here. So, and then, uh, lastly, uh, if we go back to this IMAC uh, project, is this a very very effective way to carry goods between I Asia and Europe, or do you see any geostrategic concerns in the region? Well, of course, the geostrategic concerns are very much underlying under any of these connectivity projects anywhere. Uh, but as you know, from the in 2000s, we started off working with the Russians and the Iranians on the INSTC projects. Both of them come under sanctions. So there is nothing, no permanency about these things. But as far as India is concerned, uh, we are looking at an alternative that is more viable from our perspective. Of course, each country or the partner there has its own uh, geostrategic considerations. For example, for the Saudis and, Iran, uh, and the Emiratis, they are also very close to the Chinese and they are very much part of this project, uh, of their BRI project. So they are not also looking at an alternative in that sense that they'll counter one or the other. But everybody is looking to possibly have a, a route uh, which is more feasible, which may be more competitive, which may be more efficient. Uh, so it depends if it reduces the uh, the cost and the timing, uh, ship timing by about 40%. But that's very good for the trade and industry. So, um, Taha, we know Turkey's opposition to this project. What could Ankara offer as an alternative? For example, could it also become a part of this uh, project when it gains steam in the future? I mean, I'm sure it could, but I think we're, we're so far away from this project even, uh, even becoming a serious project. I think it was a great photo opportunity at the G20. I think it was a great way to... Um, to kind of warn the Chinese, we don't need you. Um, we have alternative partners to really, um, you know, give the Saudis some news as if, you know, we're going to help you build this project. Uh, so we're so far away from it being um, imminent or serious that I don't think Turkey has uh, a problem in, in, in suggesting an alternative. Um, and as the ambassador said, we need alternatives uh, all the time anyway. So, so no real threat here for existing uh, uh, corridors. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.